Hi, I'm Teresa Horn from Sisterhood of Strong. And I'm Sarah Torino from Torino Fitness. And this is Two Trainers Talking, a show where two trainers talk about different topics to help you get healthier, you get happier, and you get more peaceful. Because getting healthier shouldn't be complicated, more expensive, or difficult. So today's topic is nutrition and summer eating. I don't know about you, but do you get a lot of people around this time that are like, all the food, <laughs> all the food, I want to eat all the food. It's just such yeah. a great time of year. The barbecues <laughs> and weddings and baby showers and the cake. The cake. Mm -hmm. Pie. Okay. Fresh fruit pie. Right. Yeah. Right. So how are we going to handle all of the events? I think we should just um, stay in the house and um, <laughs> hide. No, Nobody. we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to go out and we're going to tackle the world, right? So we wanted to talk to you guys first about how um, Teresa and I both um, want you to know how human we are. And the reason why we say this is because I think people think that they can't, they look at trainers and they're like, oh, you've got to eat perfectly all the time or you don't have any issues with food. Mm -hmm. It's not the case. Yeah? That's right. Yeah, we're not perfect. And um, we certainly are not suggesting that anyone try to be perfect. We are always making one choice at a time and uh, one day at a time. I know for myself, you know, uh, it's always one choice at a time. And I think of it myself as, is this choice going to support where I want to be with health and nutrition? Or is this choice not going to support it? And it's not, and I don't think bad choice, good choice. Um, I'm thinking, is this choice getting me where I want to be? Or is this choice not being helpful? <laughs> and sometimes I choose, this choice is not helpful. But I go into it mindful and like, yeah, this choice is not supporting me. But this is um, like tonight we have a graduation. And uh, one of my good friends makes cakes. And this cake will be wonderful. And it will be a choice that I will make mindfully. And I won't feel guilty about it. You know, I won't uh, obsess about it. It's, it's good cake. You know, it's beautiful ingredients. She lovingly makes this cake. And I'm going to have a slice and I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm not going to have the whole cake. I'm not going to uh, think about it. I'm not going to plan about it. I'm not going to get extra stuff it in my, you know, I'm, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a mindful choice. And then I'm going to keep going. So the other choices, though, I'm going to make at that graduation are going to be supportive choices for my goals. So um, if you're at an event like a graduation, what kind of choices would you make, uh, Sarah? Like, how would you navigate that food table? Well, the first thing I do is um, I usually walk through um, and I take a look at what's available. I try not to uh, um, make judgment about food. It's just food. Um, food is meant to nourish your body. Um, I, there are some foods personally that agree with me more than other foods. And then other, that, so for example, dairy and I aren't super friendly with each other. And so I try to avoid foods that have uh, dairy because it uh, frankly constipates me. Um, and so I, walk through and I look at what's available. And the next thing I do is I start to create a plate that is approximately one third protein source or one, th and it could be multiple protein sources, but about a third of my plate is, is protein, um, chicken, you know, pulled pork, whatever's there. Mm -hmm. And the other two thirds I will fill with whatever salad options are available. 
Um, I look at it not so much as, I look for color. I look to eat a rainbow. I try to have multiple choices that are delicious. And so two thirds of my plate will be that. Maybe a handful of fruit if there's fresh fruit available, but I usually start with that. What do you do? I do the, the same thing, yeah. Uh, I, and I find like uh, you mentioned, taking a look at what's available. That is such a good idea to, to because that, that way you can kind of plan how you'll um, go about it. And I do that at like graduations and barbecues and um, uh, when we go out to eat, if there's a buffet, mm -hmm. you know, um, just to take a look and kind of survey your surroundings. But I do the same thing. I'll pick my um, protein because for me, uh, I do a lot of lifting and I want to make sure that I do consciously choose my protein to make sure that I get enough because if given a situation, I would just eat all vegetables, I would like all salad, no, pre you know, so I lean, I lean that way. So I, for me, I need to be uh, conscious of my protein. And so, um, yeah, I choose my protein and then I choose my vegetables. And I think eating a rainbow is such a good idea for us to get into our heads because I mean, some of us have grown up with the um, four food groups, and now um, counting your max is so popular. You know, there's like all these fads, but like eating a rainbow, you can teach that. It's very simple, and that's what I tell my kids too. You know, so and this is the season to have a rainbow, right? All the fruits and vegetables are in season, and there's so much to choose from. So yeah, eating a rainbow is a wonderful way to think of it, and it kind of will push you to maybe choose some things that <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily choose. You know, like, well, this is all green, which is, you know, I guess I gotta get some, a yellow vegetable. <laughs> Good heavens. Look at all the fried chicken and rice I have here. Mm, potato salad, you know, where my plate has no color whatsoever, but. Right, yeah, yeah. So then let's talk about the dessert table. Because I feel like sugar, um, Sugar is an interesting beast. And if you're a, re a recovering sugar in per like really like that's your that's is sugar is your choice. Is sugar your choice? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, it so is. for me it's salty, crunchy. We were talking about this earlier. For me it's potato chips, Teresa, cake. It's cake, yeah. Good. The sugar, um, right now, it, at this point in my life, I have to, I have to be, I have to be mindful of everything I eat. But um, like in my day-to-day -day life, there are times in in the month actually where I will lean salty, crunchy. Uh, and sugar, uh, this sounds so complicated, but I kind of almost have to deal with sugar as um, kind of addictive. Mm. So uh, sugar is tricky for me, and that I usually just stay away from it. But um, so I'm um, speaking of the graduation and there is there's one person whose cake I really I, I like to choose that cake. And that's the only cake that I kind of choose. Um, but that's just that's about the journey that I've been through. And I know myself and I know this is how I do best when I handle it. I think um, if sugar is not an issue for you, then, you know, there's going to be all types of things. And luckily there's usually already a serving size established. So when we're looking at this table of sweets, um, if you are choosing one, perhaps you choose it and share it with someone. Um, that's a really good, you know, because serving sizes now are really large. So, you know, you might choose, um, a piece of cake but it's a so big piece of cake and if you've already made a plate it might be too much for you so you can choose to share or you know choose one thing or choose none of it you know there's no reason that you have to have cake or cookies or pie or whatever just because they're there uh, because I know a lot of people don't really want the sweets but they're there because so they feel like they have to have them there's no reason that you have to have cake at a wedding the person still got married you still you're still celebrating their wedding you don't have to have cake you know it, so um that's just kind of how one way to navigate it you know um 
and in for, for me, I know um, in the past also having a variety of cakes and cookies and things at the table. Um, there's more than one, so perhaps I should taste all of them. You know, just because there's more than one there doesn't mean you have to have cake and a cookie. So, you know, just your choices, you have choices just because they're presented to you in a certain way doesn't mean you have to choose them out that way, I guess is what I want to say about that too. So having that you're not a sugar person, how do you handle the dessert table? So I wait uh, some time before I've eaten. And then I ask myself a question, and it comes from this author that I really enjoy around food. Uh, her name is Janine Roth, and she wrote a book called Women, Food, and God. I was like, that name was familiar. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, <laughs> okay. And she wrote, she wrote this paragraph in the book where she talks about when you're standing in front of the pantry, ask yourself one simple question. Am I really hungry? And if you're standing in front of the pantry, you're going to be grabbing something out of it to eat, and you're not hungry, maybe close the pantry door and figure out really what it is that you are. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I wait and after I've eaten so that the food is in my stomach and, di and digesting, and right. then I approach the table. And then I ask myself that question, am I, am I hungry? Well, could I sit down to halibut and green beans right now? Uh, that's always my tip. <laughs> <Christian beans. laughs> and if I'm not truly, if I'm not truly hungry, then I don't, I don't imbibe. But sugar is not my deal. Um, I might have a tortilla chip though. Mm -hmm. So if I decide that I'm going to have a dessert, uh, there's something that I think it was Melissa Hartwig and Dallas Hartwig wrote in the Whole30, and they said, make love to it. Turn off, the, turn off the electronics. Sit and be present. And even if you're having a conversation, be really present in the enjoyment of the dessert. Right. And so I might only have a couple, two, three bites of a dessert, but I am savoring it. I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm really in, uh, trying to be present in it because of what you said. Sugar has some interesting neurological effects, um, mm -hmm. and I think we have to be mindful uh, about eating it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and even as you said that, I, I really often share dessert with my husband because what I find is, I, I do enjoy it, but it doesn't take much for me to get that enjoyment, right? So the first bite of cheesecake doesn't taste any different than the seventh. So, you know, it's like three bites and I'm like, oh, that, that I enjoy that and I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. So because I don't like the visual of it being wasted, yeah, I'll share it or uh, you know, and I've even like um, cut a piece in half and, you know, left it. Like if you're at a table where they're, they're cutting serving, left half of it or cut it and I'll walk over to the trash can and throw it away immediately just because, and I, you know, I know it's, it's, it's food, you know, I'm not going to starve. Nobody's going to starve if I cut my cheesecake in half and throw away the other half of it, you know, um, that's something I had to throw away, you know, that. You know, that eat what's on your plate, eat, eat, you know, make sure you eat all the food. It will be okay. I can, I can throw that away and it'll be fine. You know, I don't have to eat all of the cheesecake just because I got that. So, um, whole other thing, but, uh, yeah. And I think that is helpful for people too. The first bite and the seventh bite don't taste any different. So you don't have to finish it. You know, you don't have to keep eating just because it's still there. That's a really good tip. I really like that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Absolutely. So you said, just said something, and I think it's important that we address it. Let's talk about the clean plate club. Oh, yeah. So I am from a large family and we, if you did not eat quickly and get her down, you did not get a second helping for sure. And I had two brothers that I was racing against. Let me tell you, 
I learned very quickly to finish quickly. Eat, I eat faster than any other human being I've ever seen. Yeah. And so that I can quit. Yeah. So I had to break a lot of bad habits. Um, and one of them was the clean plate club because that was the messaging that I got certainly from my family. Did you get that too? Yes, absolutely. And, and I was the only child, but my mom did um, in home daycare. Mm. So, and I was usually the oldest and <laughs> You know, those little kids, they get more stuff. So I definitely would make sure I'm, you know, I'm going to make sure I get done so I can get more if I want more. So absolutely. Yeah, that's, and that was a lot of retraining that, that, you ha that I have to do. And still, I'll find that I'm kind of falling back into that, you know, and I'll have to be like, okay, wait, you know, <laughs> you don't have to eat everything. And um, I've come up with some tricks. So what do you do to kind of help yourself with that? So the big thing that I've gotten, I honestly, I use it. I use it every day is the, um, the measuring thing with your hand mm. that has helped me a ton. And the reason why is because I was one of those people that would just fill my plate over almost overloading, um, and eat it because that's what you're supposed to do. You eat what's on your plate, right? Mm -hmm. So a couple of things. First thing I did was, okay, let's start looking at appropriate serving sizes. So I use my hand as the guide. I'll use palm of the hand for protein, uh, full, full hand for, you know, sides, uh, thumb for fat, so dressing, some nuts, throw some nuts on, right? And then a uh, palm of my hand for fruit. And that has been helpful to me to just like reorganize my plate. Right. And also uh, that I, it's okay. I have to really sense and feel. I have to really sense and feel. Am I getting full? Slow down. Jeez, you don't have to nail it. <laughs> and slow down. Yeah. 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 I, um, those tips are so perfect and you can you know you don't have to have uh, measuring utensils you know you always have your hand with you yeah. and uh, I'm about to start a series called tell yourself the truth and the big thing about that is we know well I know I've known and when I first started um, working on my weight I knew the handful I knew the palm but uh, I would tell myself that it's, you know, it's the palm, but it would be a really thick palm, you know, my mm -hmm. serving of meat. So for me, I had to put it on a scale and see it was four ounces and realize what my palm really looks like, right? Like come to this grips with, no, no, that wasn't your palm. I'm not sure whose palm you thought that was. Football player. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> large football players, you know, and the, and now I have a realistic version of my palm, and it is my palm, but you know, now I know, you know, or a handful of what really a handful for me of you know grains is a cup when it's a real handful, you know. Um, and I talked about the other day uh, a handful of potato chips, you know, is about an ounce, but not that big half, you know, it's. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can get a, I can get half a bag in this hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a handful. It's a handful. Yeah, yeah, that's not really what what a handful looks like. So just you know, um, being really honest with yourself, you know, because that conversation about serving size, that that's a conversation you need to tell yourself the truth about what you're putting in your body, right? You know, it's I, I don't know. It's like who are who are you fooling? You're fooling yourself. Tell yourself the truth about your serving size, because that way you'll be able to really have a you know conversation with yourself about what you're putting in your body. How, you know? Teresa? Do you, how much has it been also about slowing down? Uh, hugely. I'm um, hugely. Who do I sound like? Oh, <laughs> uh, slowing down and being mindful so you know um no cell phone right there you know mm -hmm. like we're not eating while checking my facebook or um texting uh, you know i when i find myself 
eating and then just being stuffed. And I'm like, how did I do that? That you know, you don't stuff yourself if you're me being mindful when you're eating. Because it takes, you know, 15 minutes for your brain to realize that you're eating and you're full. So if you've got to the place where you're like, ugh, then that means you just you know, and then then the 15 minutes came and you you went beyond full. You know, um, so you know, just slowing down and having uh, eating be the thing that you're doing during that time. So, and for me, I had to like do little tricks. Like I had to try to chew. So uh, I, you know, would chew, it sounds really gross, but I would chew my food to the consistency of applesauce. So, and that's, you know, I think, I know there's some people who count, you know, find that counting how much they, you know, I don't know, 25 chews or something like that. But for me, um, consistency of applesauce is what I would think and to, to just to chew. And it was like just helped me to slow down and be mindful um, because I needed I needed like little guideposts to help me um, to change over because there were just habits that I needed to change. And I needed to be honest about, OK, I'm going to need help with that. I'm going to need help. So this is what I'm going to do. and just figuring it out as I as I go and we were talking about the um, clean plate you know um, I remember purposely leaving food on my plate like <gasps> making I know, <laughs> making this <kind gasps> because and it felt like ooh, there's you know and just being like yeah there's food there everybody's still okay you know, like nothing has happened, <laughs> you know, because it was this, this feeling like if you, you can't leave food on your plate, you know, you know, but it's, it's okay. And I would scrape everything into dishes, Teresa, you know, like the, to heat up later. Cause I was, it messed with my head to, to the idea of scraping it in the garbage was unacceptable to me. And so I would put them in dishes and just be like, okay, well, we'll it'll get eaten. Just not right now. Yes, yes, totally, totally do that. And, you know, and sometimes it, it would get eaten. You know, I have one of my sons does not like sandwiches. So he would be so happy for leftovers, you know, leftover food. You know, some people don't like leftovers. He just loves it. So, you know, I was like, well, he can have, you know, or, or nobody. But yes, a lot of times um, having it, not throwing it away. But just putting in containers, even if you kind of know nobody's going to eat that. <laughs> but just the thought that somebody could, just it made me feel better. I, and I still do that at restaurants. At restaurants, and I, um, they'll bring, you know, whatever I've ordered my meal, and I'll ask for a box right away <gasps> and half in it. Oh, yeah, right. And I do it right away, which is always, you know, the server is like, what a great idea. Yeah, right away, box it up. Because I've actually, you know, sometimes you are really, <laughs> serving sizes are always big at restaurants, but sometimes you're really hungry and you do actually want the whole serving of fajitas, you know, <laughs> or whatever. So I'll divide it and it's in a box on the table and I'll eat and enjoy and everybody, you know, and if I'm like, yeah, no, I'm still hungry, I could eat. It's, it's right there mm. in a box, but you do have to go through the process of opening the box. And this is a different trigger, but everybody at the table has watched you box up your half of your meal, right? So, like, if you're going to go in that box, <laughs> Shame. Be, right, 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 you're hungry. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go open my box because I really do want all the fajitas today, which, but, you know, if you're hungry, you don't care and you'll open that box. But if you're not really hungry, but every, because you know what, um, you know, if you're out to dinner, there's some social eating that's happening, you know, mm -hmm. people are eating because everybody's together. Uh, so the box, boxing it up for me is a really good one because, you know, when I'm really hungry, I will open the box. But generally, I'm not. You know? I feel like you and I could talk about this. Um, yeah. There's so much around this. You know, we should do, let's come back and do another episode and talk more about you because your journey is so inspiring. Thank you yeah I'd, I'd love to love right. to any final thoughts you want uh 
enjoy. You know, we're talking about these things, and uh, I think sometimes we are working on changing our eating habits, and we have this fear. You know, it's one thing to change your eating habits when you're controlling it at your home and another to kind of go out in the world. So, you know, don't be afraid to go to events. You can make good choices anywhere and um, enjoy, you know, because we have, a, our lives are social and eating is a social thing. So you want to go out and enjoy your life. Yeah. How about you? Same, same, same. I would say also, if you can look at food as nourishment and that you're nourishing your beautiful body um, and that it's, it's just food. It doesn't, you know, it, you can kind of not have it have so much control and power over you. Right. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, listening to Two Trainers Talking. Thank you for joining us for Two Trainers Talking. We hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions for either of us, you can email us at these addresses on the screen or you can post in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Keep an eye out for more T3 episodes, Two Trainers Talking, and let us know what topics you like to hear about. Thank you all for joining us and may you care for yourself this day and every day.